how the heck did ISO go from this to this? all in the same episode. Hey guys, it's Kompeki here. In today's video, I'll go over how ISO is changing Valorant. I'll cover why I think ISO is strong, even with the recent nerfs. I'll go over how he affects the meta and how you can counter him in your own games. And if you want to learn more about how you can rank up in this meta, my team of VCT level coaches and I can give you feedback inside our 10-week Immortal Roadmap coaching program. We're so confident in our coaching that if you don't gain 500 RR in 10 weeks, we'll give you a full refund. The first one-on-one -on -one call with us is completely free, so use the link in the description below to book your free call. ISO's journey has been unique compared to other duelists. At release, he wasn't very effective. In fact, he was quite terrible compared to other duelists at the time, which was reflected in his low pick rate. This was disappointing because Riot intended him to compete with the other meta duelists. Duelists like Jet, Rays, or even non-meta picks like Neon still ended up being better options because they could create more space than ISO on the map. So what made his kit so bad? Well, he had no control over his wall and his shield didn't activate without getting a kill. His vulnerables were decent to be fair, but they weren't enough to make up for his lack of entry abilities. In some cases, they could even be disadvantageous in duels because they telegraphed your next move, making it harder to capitalize when you didn't have that shield handy. In his ultimate, it was essentially a 50-50 gamble for seven alt orb points. Many people, including myself, were made fun of for losing 1v1s in his ultimate. But again, this was because you didn't have any significant advantage unless you had your shield up beforehand. But everything changed with the release of patch 8.11. Overnight, ISO transformed from the worst duelist in history to one of the best we've ever seen. No other agent in the history of Valorant has changed so drastically with just a few small edits to their kit. His shield suddenly became free of charge, meaning no kills were required to activate it. And now, anytime you enter a site with ISO, this shield can be up and running in any context against any opponent. Imagine you're holding an angle with an operator. Even if ISO peaks with just a sheriff, his free shield can stop your 4,700 credit weapon. Or consider the judge. You've avoided all the utility thrown at you and no one suspects you're hiding in the corner with the judge. Suddenly, ISO contacts up with his shield and tanks your shot, giving him the chance to kill you. Any plans you have with the judge are now gone and he counters you by literally walking forward every single round. And it's not just these one-shot weapons where ISO disrupts normal fights. He breaks the fundamentals of how you're supposed to aim as well. Take crosser placement as an example. You could have perfect crosser placement, perfect first bullet accuracy, and the perfect weapon like a Vandal. But it doesn't matter if ISO pops his shield. He'll tank your headshot and walk away like nothing happened. But that's not all. The Valorant community overlooked a key component in the new shield buffs. While people focus on the easy activation, they missed the tagging changes from high penetration to a wall penetration tag. Before the buff, playing ISO felt terrible for more reasons than just his shield being hard to activate. Even when you did have the shield, anything that touched it felt like being hit by a tank. A classic could stop you the same way an operator did on your shields. But after the new buff, playing ISO with shields felt like running at Mach 10 compared to before. Especially because those judges and operators we mentioned earlier don't register as normal tags. Same thing with vandals and phantoms. All damaging utility or weapons now register as wall penetration tagging against Against the shield. So not only are you tankier than before, but you're also tag resistant, making you an absolute wide swing machine. But as things go, Riot quickly realized their mistake and hit ISO with a hot fix nerf before he could become something beyond broken. In the current patch, ISO no longer gains additional shield charges with kills, and his shield duration is down to 12 seconds. Everything else from his changes in patch 8.11 has stayed the same. So in other words, while an early chamber-like crisis has been probably avoided, all the things we just went over still apply. So are these changes enough to curb his newfound strength, or is ISO going to be leading the meta in episode 9? While ISO isn't the only agent to have major changes this act, he has undoubtedly impacted the ranked meta the most. According to Blitz.gg, ISO is now in the top 10 most picked agents in Radiant. The only other quote-unquote new agent on this list is Clove, which also means that despite all the significant changes to Neon, she still doesn't match ISO in terms of power or popularity as a duelist. So what does this mean for you? There are a few things you can use ISO for for now. First, ISO can function as an amazing secondary duelist. Second, he also makes running a triple duelist comp more common and more viable. And lastly, ISO has become a jack of all trades that fits well into every single map in the map pool, including the new map Abyss. But you might be saying, Kompeki, this doesn't change everyone insta-locking duelists in my games, 
and it actually makes it worse. And I totally understand that. Insta-locking is something we've all experienced when playing ranked. So let's break down how ISO will affect agent select. When you queue into a game, you typically see a composition of two duelists, one controller, one sentinel, and one initiator. However, like anything in Valorant, this isn't guaranteed. You might end up with three, four, or even five duelists, which can sometimes ruin the experience for everyone. ISO doesn't necessarily help you avoid this scenario, but that doesn't mean you should freak out or dodge every time you see three duelists with an ISO on board. ISO can be both greedy and team oriented with this kit, even more so than other duelists. Like any agent class, ISO has subclasses. In his case, he fits more into an initiator subclass because his vulnerable and wall are great for supporting your team in pushing through difficult choke points or walls. So if you see ISO, Reyna, and Jet in your game, don't fret. He still brings a lot of value to your team. In more typical games with standard compositions, ISO fits in well with any dive duelist like Jet, Raze, or the new Neon. He can also work with other secondary duelists like Reyna or Phoenix in a similar fashion. His kit is just that good at being both supportive and aggressive. This plug and play capability allows him to fit into any team comp, highlighting how ISO has become a jack of all traits. He can fit into any map, any team, and find good value in each round. So does this mean he's a good solo duelist? Personally, I think his kit makes him extremely weak on his own. If he's the only duelist, he'll need support from initiators to get into sites. So if you're filling around in ISO as your only duelist, agents like Gecko, Breach, or Sky can help him take some real space on the map. And if you are that solo ISO, don't be afraid to ask for your team's help to take those fights. The last thing you need is your teammates flaming you for being a terrible entry or not getting any kills. You have an insane shield ability and there's no reason to waste it by dying without any support. This brings me to another point that isn't mentioned often enough with a new ISO, his ability to counter duelists who typically find value with one-shot weapons thanks to his shield. Weapons like the Operator and the Judge are often favored by duelists like Jet, Chamber, and Raze. I can't tell you how many times I've been sniped or shotgunned in Valorant, but playing ISO against these types of weapons feels like a breeze. The power trip is real, and he excels at countering these duelists who rely on one-shot weapons. One last thing I want to highlight in this meta discussion is that whenever the meta shifts, it's usually due to an agent with a heavy mechanics and kill-based playstyle. Chamber, Jet, and Raze all had insane mechanical or ability ceilings at the peak of their metas. This pushed them to be the strongest agents during their time, and ISO is the next iteration of that trend. We are already experiencing these changes faster than ever before. Okay, so ISO can do an insane amount of things in this new meta, but what can we do to counter his seemingly overpowered kit? Even after all these crazy changes around ISO, there's hope. And no, you don't have to just run away every time you hear his shield pop. You can counter ISO with very specific utility, weapons, and methods to bring him to his knees. The first and most important aspect of countering ISO is chip damage. Chip damage refers to any minor damage you receive during encounters. This can happen from spamming smokes, breaking utility, moving around the map, entering a site, and retaking a site. Basically, anything involving a fight. For ISO, his worst enemy is chip damage from suppressed weapon spams. The Phantom, Spectre, and Ghost all counter him effectively when there's a smoke between you and him. No tracers mean he can't counter spam to get his shield activated. But let's say there's not a smoke available, you can use high penetration weapons through walls or medium penetration weapons on corners to achieve the same effect. This strategy works especially well on maps like Ascent or Haven, where the walls are basically made of paper. The goal with these spams is just to hit his shield before he sees you. Of course, you don't want to just go out in the open and declare a duel with him in a random part of the map. Instead, a helpful cue is a shield audio. ISO players have to shield scream, nah, I'd win, before they engage. It doesn't matter where he is on the map. If he's within range, one of your teammates or you can hear the shield pop and call it out early enough to spam it. You can also use utility to do the chip damage for you. Once you hear shield activate, use mollies, nades, and shocks. Just anything that does damage from a distance will work. The best part is, once his shield breaks, you can use those ultimates he normally dodges for free and watch him cower in fear. For other passive utility like trips and stuns, we'll discuss those later. For now, let's move on to the next tip. The next method of defeating ISO players is to force them into a fight with you and your teammates. I get it. Sometimes it's hard to get everyone to work together in a ranked game. But even if you are just next to your teammate and not directly fighting together, it gives you a better chance to stop the king of 1v1s from getting exactly what he wants in a fight. However, if you can't coordinate with your team, then simply avoid a fair fight altogether. I know I said you don't have to run, but sometimes you have to know when to take the fight and when to avoid it. You don't see pros running into an operator every round, so why run into a shielded ISO every round? Especially with a time nerf on his shield, it's much easier to ignore him or run away to come back later on equal fighting terms. But what if he ults you before you can react? 
React. To counter an ISO player in their ultimate, the best method is to use their classic shorty or a running gun tactic to shoot or jump through the wall before they can hide away. This method is high risk, high rewards, and it's not always consistent. Sometimes ISO players pre-aim and pre-fire the wall to stop you from doing this. However, it's better than taking a fight against ISO without any counters, especially if you have something like an operator, marshal, or an outlaw. Some agents can even dodge ISO's ultimate before it activates. For example, agents like Yoru and Chamber. Basically, anyone with an escape ability, you can get away before the ult pops. With Yoru specifically, you can save your decoys so that ISO ults the clone instead of you. The final counter that works really well against ISO players is trap plays. The passive utility we talked about earlier is crucial here, as anything like a turret or trip can delay ISO enough for our other methods to be effective. Does your Cypher have a trip on a choke point? Throw a neon stun when ISO hits the trip to stun him before he can escape. Does your Killjoy have a turret on a doorway? Save your raise nade and ultimate to catch him off guard when he triggers a turret. Are you a Sova behind an easily spammable wall? Throw your dart the minute you hear ISO shield activate and let your Odin do the heavy lifting. Any sort of trap play on attack or defense works, and you don't always have to communicate for it to be effective either. As long as you use passive utility in combination with damage utility or spams, you'll get insane value in defeating ISO. But that still leaves us with an unanswered question. Were these nerfs enough? In my opinion, not really. The fact that ISO can work so well in any team, along with the counters for him being difficult to achieve consistently compared to countering other duelists, makes him challenging to deal with. However, I still think it's a step in the right direction to prevent a chamber level crisis from happening again. He's not nearly as overpowered as his initial buffs made him to be. At any rate, it's not my place to critique what Riot has done to ISO. My job is just to help you guys adapt, learn, and play better against these types of buffs and nerfs that happen all the time. So I hope you learned something from this video. Comment below what your thoughts are on the changes and thanks for watching.